Morning folks, Phil here from Telford Koi Pond on a very uh, cold, frosty, wintry wonderland sort of uh, morning here in Telford. Um, just a bit of a quick update type video today. A few shout outs, thank you to people and just to uh, show you where I am with my winter prep because I've had a number of people asking whether I've got covers on yet and what I'm doing about heating. So uh, let me spin you around and we can uh, we can have a look where I am with my uh, my winter prep. So as you can quite clearly see, covers are all on the pond. Baskets at the back have all been emptied, all the plants have gone. It's uh, it's that depressing grey time of year, isn't it? So yeah, my winter covers, I'll be honest with you, I was really chuffed with them when I pulled them out because uh, there's a the side of the shed there, you probably can't tell, but there's a two foot gap all the way down the side of the shed. And I just literally stand these up on their edge and I was expecting to bring them out and they were all extremely green and ugh, horrible uh, but to be honest what you're looking at now is how they came out I literally hose pipe the stuck on leaves to them so that came off and uh, yeah they're okay so uh, I'm sure Stu from Surrey Coy will be absolutely elated to know that my pond covers are uh, my, my uh, covers are uh, survived, the, survived the summer and I'm, I'm using them again so there you go Stu the only thing I've done slightly different this year is, as you can probably see here, uh, my summer covers are now stored where these were, at the side of the uh, back of the shed sort of thing. But I've left one of the summer covers, anti-heron covers, if you like, the stuff I put on when I go away on holiday for a, for a couple of weeks, I've left one of them on. And the reason for that is I've just shoved one of these uh, winter covers on top. And what it means is I can quite easily now, just literally, I don't know what I'm going to say literally, I don't know what we've got to do with one hand, but literally just slide it across. Uh, so if it's bright and sunny, even if it's not too uh, too warm, rather than having to lift covers on and off, I'll just slide them on top of one another. So uh, you'll probably see a great lump of steam coming out now, but uh, I'll have a go doing it one hand. There we go. There we go. Literally, just push it across like that. And then the fish can have some... Uh, some natural lighting. They've been fed this morning, so my water is at uh, 15 degrees. I think it's yeah, 15 degrees at the moment. The heater's still on. You can probably hear it uh, in the background. So I've still got my heater on. That's set at 15. That's been coming down one degree per week or two degree a week at the start. So it's due to go down to 14 uh, today or tomorrow. Don't know whether the fish are going to come up, but there you go. There they are. So yeah, my, my pond is, is covered and the only daylight like they're going to get for the next few months is either on bright sunny days I'll pull that back uh, and in fairness I don't tend to pull it back that much I do just uh, I do just pull it back half so I can, uh, particularly around feeding time so I can see them coming up and I can just check them over and everything I suppose this is where uh, pond window would come in extremely well but uh, I didn't get down that route so it is what it is uh, and also I can see them all through here to be honest and that sounds daft but when they come up they're virtually uh, climbing out the hole there where the, the feeder drops the pellets into so yeah that's it that's my uh, my winter prep on the outside and I'll uh, take you into the filter house and show you what I've done on the inside so just to show you the difference between inside and outside I don't know if you'll see that but that's the outside thermometer there is saying minus two and if we go into the uh, filter house, bearing in mind I've had this door open just for a couple of minutes, we are at, you definitely probably can't see that, I think we're at about eight. Like you said, let me just put my glasses on, do apologise for the shaky camera. Get you on there. There we go. So yeah, we're about eight degrees inside. And obviously that's, uh, that's no heating or anything, so jobs I've done since last time I have double insulated the door so I think you'll remember last time we just put one lot of uh, 25 mil insulation on um, but I've used I've used up I think I had two full sheets left and loads of bits so I've done two layers in here now as you can see by the, the makeup pieces at the side and the bits at the corners I couldn't do it all in one because I've got big sheets left but that's all got uh, two lots on now and what I've also done is, I um, don't know if you'll see it very well, but at the edges there, there's now an extra piece 
inside so all the all the bits there that go over and to the to the outside there's an extra piece of insulation in there and I've done that let's see over there I've done that front and back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to order some more of these big sheets and then I'm going to uh, probably next weekend I'm going to go and uh, just do the roof again so the roof's got another layer on top but I must admit I'm really impressed with the fact that it's uh, as I say it's 10 degrees sorry two de minus two degrees outside and it's holding at eight degrees in, he in here and as you can see there's no uh, there's no heating or anything I haven't got an actual heater or uh, anything in here that's just from obviously the uh, the heat of the water it's from the heat from the air pumps I didn't realize um, air pumps give off so much heat to be honest with you um, but you know it's just the heat of all the electrical stuff in here so that's where I am at the minute um, and I'll take the lids off and I'll just show you what I've done with the pump and things and then I'll come back to you okay so as you can see uh, in the drum I do nothing with the uh, with the drum for the winter, there's nothing, no special prep or anything like that. Actually, that's a lie. That, that is actually a, a terrible fib. What I have done is, um, oh, we can't do it on here at the minute because the, I'll show you when the lids when the lids back on. Um, but obviously, you can set intervals for how often your drum cleans. It will clean clean anyway when it gets down to the low water level. But you can set intervals. So in the height of summer, I have it running enough to clean about every 20 minutes. Um, but this is down to uh, every 60 minutes now and that's the longest period you can actually program into this so the pumps only cleaning once every 20 minutes I'll show you that afterwards but in terms of everything else in here uh, there's just nothing happening there's no gunk or anything it's uh, yeah it just, just is what it is the moving bed there is uh, fine shan't turn that air down that's only 45 litres anyway believe it or not 14 or 5 litres per minute air pump and as you can see there's nothing sticking at the corners or anything like that and that's with um, 100 litres of Helix 13 and of course the uh, 20 litres of Elazi Pond pads that I put in as a, as a trial which I think have been an absolutely su superb success. Uh, in the individual unit, again, done nothing in here. The two canisters, these these things here, these two, uh, these two bowls, whatever you want to call them, the big cages, they're just full of K1 sinking media. Uh, which I am happy to report after God knows how many months it has actually sinking now I don't, I don't need these covers these caps on anymore but I've just left them on anyway and then I've got all the media that came out of the uh, my quarantine tank the little box filter for the quarantine tank it's all stuck there so it's still keeping that alive um, and the reason for that is um, my mate Ada Coid Keeper he's going to be rejigging his pond uh, after Christmas he's going to make it uh, taller going to rip it out and put box weld liner in um, and he's going to borrow my quarantine tank to keep his fishing while he's doing all that so obviously I'll keep all this nice and active for uh, for when we do that and then as you can see over the back um, my trickling I mean you can see how slow that trickling is it's it's an, I run it at a maximum of 150 millilitres per minute and that equates to around about a 13% water change on the on the whole pond every week but you know that's that's the rate of change if you like so no big flushes or anything like that I did uh, I did a big uh, bottom drain purge and pre sort of pre rooted pep if you look at one of my earlier videos but uh, you know I just don't need to purge that often it's all I'm really looking to do with that trickle in is replace the water that the drum uses when the uh, when the drum cleans itself and obviously that comes that comes out of here and into waste so you can have I don't know if you'll see but that trickle, that water dripping or running into the drain at the minute, so I can't see down here, so I don't know if you'll see it. That's actually full bore because the, uh, that's as, as much as it gets because this is quite low at the minute. As soon as the filter cleans and it comes up again, that will literally be a drip. So other than that, the only other thing, pump wise, I don't know whether this will strobe, but my, uh, my 12,000 litre per hour pump is running at 40% and it's got to run at 40% because that's the minimum flow rate through the um, heat, heat, air, air source heat pump so I don't ever turn that down that just stays at 40 but the 18,000 litre per hour that normally runs at sort of 50% in the height of summer 40% uh, spring and autumn is only 20% at the minute and I'll probably turn that down to 10% just to keep it turning over I think that's possibly the minimum it'll do anyway 
so that's uh, that's we are where we are in terms of the uh, winter prep I'll get the covers back on and I'll come back to you so just go back to the uh, cleaning frequency if we go to um, that's the clean extra clean so that's the interval if we click on the interval and hold it in you'll see that it runs every 60 minutes so that's regardless of how uh, whether the low water indicator goes off or not that will run every 60 minutes uh, and there's 15 degrees at the minute as you can see um, the only other thing I suppose to update you on is the is the pipe work for the RO so my RO unit that I'm having uh, built by Andy Finch will sit there on that wall very nicely um, so what I've done in preparation for it is the main pump which uh, the 1800 pump that comes out of here and normally takes the pond water back into two returns just there high level and mid level in the pond I've, um, I do apologise you haven't had to see this very well but I put a, t put a T on here a T piece so that T piece just comes down and then into inch pipe and there's a ball valve there so I can turn it off that then at 45 degrees sort of goes back to this pipe here which runs all the way down the back I hope I'm getting it because I'm not filming this at the minute and then yeah, it's easy to cut so it comes around the back here just on a little wooden support at the minute uh, and then it comes up the back a little bit of a shimmy around the back of the uh, standpipe and then it's all plumbed into this uh, large pre-filter so that's all that just needs the insides putting into it but that's all fixed up now as is this connector so when Andy, uh, yeah, Andy comes to do his bits and pieces he will literally just have to uh, it's all made up on a board he'll just mount his board on on that wall somewhere wherever he feels it uh, relevant and then uh, a pipe into there and a pipe back into well wherever, wherever we're going to put it back into probably around the back and into the individual unit um, and that's Bob's your uncle so I'm really excited about uh, getting that in um, let's say if you look at the readings on the uh, Pond Lab Guardian at the minute from Blue Lab Guardian pH is 7.8 temperature is 7, uh, 15 degrees the uh, TDH is only showing as 320 because the probe's dirty and I can't be bothered to clean it because I know it's wrong. If it was, uh, yeah, I just can't be bothered. <laughs> so we'll we'll see what that changes to when uh, when Andy's done the RO. The other thing I forgot to mention in terms of in here winter prep, I have actually covered half the windows up with the polystyrene that I had left. So I'm thinking, to be honest, when I get the rest of it um, to do a bit more on the roof, whatever I've got left, I might cover a bit more of the windows up just to. Uh, because when I do come in here, even when the blind's down and put my hand here, I can sort of feel the uh, the cold air coming in. But other than that, I'm really pleased, as I say, for this to, to maintain 10 degrees warmer than outside without any sort of uh, heat in here, no fan heat and no gas-filled oil radiator or anything. I'm really chuffed with that. So uh, I, I've stopped, because not last year I, I um, covered all these pipes in... Uh, insulation but I'm not going to do that this year I'm just going to uh, keep a very close eye on the temperature so there you go I'll snap back to you in a bit so other than that then really um, just want to say a big thank you to everybody really for for two things first of all um, not everybody may know that um, we've had a lot of issues at home at the minute my uh, well not at the minute my dad dad went in hospital for a while uh, there's just been so much going on I'm not, I'm not going to bore you with the details but I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all the people that have sent me um, you know best wishes and things like that it, it really 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 does make a difference so uh, I'm not going to call out names on, on that front because you know who you are but yeah really thank you it really sort of perked us up when, it, when things were uh, looking a bit dire at times um, you know I'm really pleased to report everything's looking up now and everybody's back home where they should be and things like that so yeah just, just, just a big thank you it really makes a difference when you guys uh, you know show us some love it, it's brilliant um, and this, the shout outs I am going to do because there was uh, you know I watched a lot, a, lot, a lot of videos when I could and that sort of thing um, I'd like to start with uh, a young gentleman from Liverpool so as you can see by my uh, spin you around by my footwear Dun 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 Danny, my boy's Koi Liverpool. 
I, can't, I do apologise, I wasn't taking the piss then. I can't say Liverpool without <laughs> saying Liverpool. Um, feel free to take the uh, the mickey out of my accent. But yeah, I won, I won the uh, fish, fish flops in his competition and completely out of the blue recently. Had the little uh, delivery from the postman. He sent me a mug. So thank you very much, Danny. That's uh, That was really kind of you and really appreciated and very unexpected. So uh, as you can see, it's, it's on. Oops. I haven't got a lot, but it's on the uh, it's on the wall of mugs at the minute, and hopefully I'll uh, I'll get a few more if anybody's uh, got one to get rid of. But now, just uh, just really to say thank you, you know, thank you, Danny. That that was really great, and people that have sort of kept my kept my spirits up and things of late. Um, got to do a big shout out to um, Keith, well, Keith from Sebers Pond, um, Jamie from Keeping It Coy. Skeggy, so that's Shelton, uh, Skeggy Pond Supplies. Um, I've got to mention Jack, the balding reefer. Um, you know, the um, Gaz, Gaz's Koi Pond. You know, these, these are all the channels that I've been watching, Keep Spirits Up and that sort of thing. Um, there's loads, loads, loads more, including uh, My Boys Koi, obviously. I'll do a proper channel shout out perhaps next week. But just, just want to say, you know, you guys, my uh, Koi Water Plants and Rants, Stu from Surrey Koi. Um, you can, oh, I've just got so many names going through my head at the minute. Um, I'll do a proper shout out thing next next week. But um, just to, just a big thank you, a few shout outs. Thank you for the mugs. Thank you for the support. Thank you for uh, just putting your videos out basically and give me something to watch. So uh, I think I'm going to call it there because I'm starting to ramble on a bit, and uh, I'm sure if I stay in here much longer, I'll find something to do. So uh, I'm going to go and have a warm cup of tea in the house, and I'll uh, I'll see you next time. Stay safe, guys. Be good. Cheers.